the quarterback at Cincinnati that led them to a 12-0 regular season under Brian Kelly and the 2010 Sugar Bowl and a BCS appearance. He's the sideline reporter for the Bearcats. His name's Tony Pike on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Tony, how's it going today? Doing well, guys. How you doing? We're, we're great. Thanks for coming on the show. This is an interesting yeah, matchup. No problem. Uh, both teams are 4-4 four and four, uh, and hoping to finish the season strong, get into a bowl game. Where's Cincinnati at uh, right now as they figure out quarterback situation, offense, and uh, trying to rebound from that game against Temple? Yeah, it, it, it's really been just a, a full season of kind of question marks with this team, um, starting with the quarterback position. I think anytime you go into a season and, and you have so many questions at the quarterback position, it, it's not going to work out well for you. And they've played three this year so far. Um, and, it, and it looks like the struggles that a young Hayden Moore and a young Ross Trellis had have, have kind of paved the way now for the senior Gunnar Keel. Uh, seems to be the guy, you know, that that's going to take the rest of the, the snaps this year, barring any injuries or anything like that. But it, it's just a situation here where, you know, they're, they're still trying to find their identity. I know that sounds crazy, you know, going into your ninth game, but, you know, do they want to come out and be a running team? Do they want to be a team that, that can pass the ball? And, and throughout this season, you know, teams have been able to kind of make them one-dimensional. I think that's the, the biggest thing they want to get to is just finding that balance. Tony, we referenced the, you know, zero first downs, 11 yards and whatnot. This week, what do you expect different offensively from Gunnar Keel and the Bearcats? Well, I, I think I think the biggest thing, they're, they're going to try to exploit different things in the passing game. Um, you know, I, when, when you look at, at our defense, they're giving up 180 on the ground. Um, and then teams have really been able to kind of just keep us off the field on offense. So a, a big focus for UC is going to be third down conversions and, and getting themselves into certain manageables. Uh, too many times against Temple, you mentioned 11 yards in the second half, and they only possessed the ball for five minutes the whole half. So, um, you know, they get into third and longs, and, and obviously when you only have 11 yards and a half, you're, you're facing a lot of third and 10 or even longer. That's hard to that's hard to be an offensive coordinator or a quarterback in situations like that. So, their, their big focus, they got to win on first and second down and maybe get into some third and ones, third and three, third and four, things like that to where you open up the playbook because this team just isn't built uh, to, to convert these third and longs. I mean, last year, you know, when, when we came out there, we, we had a group of, of receivers that um, I thought just from being around the game could, could kind of match up with, with any team. This year, they're, they're younger at receiver. They're not as experienced, so it, it's harder to convert those third and longs. So they need to rely on their running game and just kind of get Gunner comfortable, get him some early completions, uh, and try to get him into the flow of the game. He, uh, Gunner Keel had such a good game against East Carolina, and then Temple, obviously a different kind of opponent, a better defense. But what is Gunner Keel capable of in this game against BYU, you think? Well, Gunner, Gunner he, he's a very capable quarterback all around. I think, you know, even going into this year and last year, he, you know, he set records here at UC, uh, seven touchdowns in a game. He, he, he's kind of ignited an offense, but it, his biggest problem has just been that consistency. And he's he's been haunted by injuries. He's been haunted by turnovers. Um, if, if you take those things out and, and he protects the ball, he, he can be one of the top quarterbacks in the country. Obviously, like I said, you take away the, the group of receivers we had last year, that's going to hurt any quarterback and it's going to hurt any quarterback stats. But I, I really think that you know, Gunner has turned the corner of maturity. He's turned the corner of understanding defenses more. And his biggest thing is it's just take what the defense gives you. When you're when you're sitting at four and four and, and you've sat on the sideline like Gunner has all year, you have a tendency to come out and just want to try to do too much. And I think that's kind of been a little bit of his problem. Things came very easy in the ECU game. Temple, through watching that ECU game, now got some some information. They used some different coverages, different blitzes, things like that. So now that he's got his third game in. It's, it's going to be key, not just for Gunner, but we've seen all year with this offense making adjustments at halftime, and that, that's really been their biggest struggle. Coach Tuberville said that Taysom Hill will be the best quarterback that since he will face this year. How do you think the Bearcat defense matches up against a quarterback like Taysom at his size with his skill set? Well, he, he's a guy. He can, he can make plays with his feet when he needs to. He can make plays with his arm. And, and like you said, the biggest thing is just his – you know, his size, being a bigger guy, uh, historically, um, through this, this UC team, um, they've, had some, they've had some trouble kind of handling bigger quarterbacks. And, and, uh, and I think that's where you, you go here. You've you got to keep him in the pocket, but you also you have to make him get uncomfortable and get off his mark. So many times good quarterbacks 
um, you know, if, if you're able to just get into a rhythm and drop back and, you know, uh, first and 10, you're stepping up into your throws. If you're not having to move off your spot and you can just kind of get into, that, like I said, that good rhythm, um, you're, you're going to have a lot of success. You look at the, the West Virginia game this year, you know, anytime a quarterback can rush over for, for 100 yards against a team like West Virginia, you know, almost 100 against Utah. I mean, this is a, a, a guy and, and a team in UC that has struggled against quarterbacks that can run. And then when you add in the fact that he is more of a complete passer than what they've seen, they've seen uh, Ward this year from Houston. They've seen the South Florida guy. Both are going to make more plays with their legs and arm. Um, when you look at that Taysom, he, he's got both. So if you take away the running game, he can still throw the ball. If you take away, you know, his passes and just try to drop eight guys, he can take off and run. So it's going to be big for UC to be able to rush four guys and get pressure on them and not get out of their lanes. Because if he gets out of the pocket and starts making plays with his feet, then UC has to, to put more into the box uh, to, to stop him running. He's going to you know be able to have a, a field day in the secondary then. Tony Pike, Cincinnati sideline reporter, former uh, Cincinnati quarterback and Panther quarterback in the NFL, is on BYU Sports Nation. Both these teams are 4-4. Four and four. BYU's played uh, what's perceived as probably its toughest schedule ever in terms of top-to-bottom competition. So what's your perception of the Cougars after eight games? Oh, I'm, I'm extremely impressed. I mean, when you look at the, the, the opponents you've had and the wins you've had, I mean, I, I, I remember watching the Boise game, which is a tough loss, but you look at teams like Mississippi State, Michigan State, West Virginia, obviously UCLA, Utah, Arizona. I mean, you guys are playing, you know, the, the type of teams that, that you need to. So sitting at, at four and four, you know, and, and, you know, winnable game against West Virginia, winnable against Boise, and, and obviously the other two losses by a point and by three points. I mean, it's a very, this team is very close to being undefeated or, you know, a six and two, something like that. So it, it, it's a balanced team. It's a, you know, they, they play hard, they play disciplined, and uh, it, it's going to be a test for UC because, like I said, UC is in a, they're in a unique spot right now because they're, 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 they're in this little downward spiral of, and, and you guys have seen it too, you know, you come into the season with the, the aspirations and hopes of, you know, what can happen if something happens with the Big 12, and, you know, throughout the season they've just had kind of chips taken away where UC, they lost to Houston, lost to South Florida, so they're out of the American Athletic Conference race, uh, the Big 12 decision comes down, and then a bad loss with UConn, a bad loss with Temple. Uh, it it kind of puts this team in a situation where, you know, they, like I said, they have to be able to adjust because all their losses, you see them very competitive or leading in the first half, and then the second half they just don't make the adjustments. When you look at your guys' team, you're going to play a full game. You're going to come out and, and compete for four quarters, and UC is going to have to match that. Well, seven of BYU's eight games have been decided by a uh, touchdown or less, and so we'll see how this one turns out tomorrow. But, Tony, we appreciate the time. Uh, have, a, have a good time on the sideline tomorrow. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you having me.